Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to On The Sideline. It's your coach, it's Coach P. In today's video, we're gonna actually uh, step away from uh, talking about plays and drills. We're actually gonna do a coach talk on this very important question, or at least I think it's important. And the question that I have for you all today is this. What separates a great basketball coach from a mediocre one? What separates a great basketball coach from a bad coach? Now, this might sound like a typical boring question on a, on a coaching license exam, but the truth is, is this. The answer is flexibility. Now, I'm not talking about a coach who's able to do the splits. I'm not talking about a coach who's able to do handstands or bend over backwards. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a coach who's actually able to make adjustments smart and quick coaching adjustments during a game and over the course of a full basketball season. That's what I'm talking about when I speak of flexibility. You see, if two coaches, one good, one bad, start with an equally skilled team and nothing goes wrong, the good coach only has a slight edge to come out on top. It's when adversity hits that real coaching ability is put on display. So for example, how do you adjust when one matchup is killing you? How quickly can the coach identify that something needs to be changed? Do they make a matchup change? Uh, do they decide to trap the ball or change the team's defense? If they trap, can the coach get the team to make the correct rotations? Another thing I want to speak about is this. How do you adjust when your best player gets injured? I just had a player who got injured in, uh, during the course of a, um, of a very important game. So say your best player rolls her ankle before a big tournament. Are you able to make smart adjustments to your lineup, your substitutions, your offense, your defense to continue maximizing your team's potential? Can you do that? How do you adjust when the offense isn't working? Your team is used to playing man-to-man, -man, but all of a sudden you're facing an opponent who's playing his own defense. Do you know the best way to take advantage of defenses who step off and one pass away instead of, uh, of denying the pass? The takeaway in this today is this. When someone gets out coached, that usually means that one coach made better adjustments throughout the game than the other. Improving this part of your coaching involves increasing your basketball IQ, which is studying the game via reading. You can study the game uh, via watching the game and gaining experience. I know for me, I speak of experience when I say this. I'm a type of coach who, uh, first of all, I do set high expectations for myself. Uh, but in order for me to get better, what I do is this. I talk with other coaches. Uh, I ask them questions. I also speak with the referees because all of this allows me to get better at my position. All right. So again, guys, this was a quick coach talk on what makes the difference or what is the difference between a, co uh, a bad coach and a great coach. All right? Like always, guys, you guys know the drill. Questions, comments, you want to drop them down below. You also want to make sure you subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of my videos. Until next time, everybody, with this coach talk, it's your coach. It's Coach P. Ciao for now. <music>